Hi guys, let's talk about terminating a team member. In this training, I'm gonna go over our three steps to terminating a team member in less than three minutes. I'm gonna go over not just the science, which again is kind of the script and the step-by-step, -step, but rather also the art um, of terminating a team member, all the little things you need to consider, as well as making sure logistics and the paperwork and all of that uh, were compliant with the law and everything in between. And along with that, let's get into it. First, I want to tell you that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And it's so important for us to know the power of our words. We can build up or tear down with our words. And in this training, you're going to hear key words and key phrases that I repeat over and over. And I'd like you to pay attention to those because you need to remember those key words and use them strategically when the time comes. First off, why do we terminate a team member? Um, now, we do have in our employee handbook like 10 reasons for uh, immediate termination if someone's caught like, you know, stealing food or uh, money or something like that. Somebody who was rude to a customer, for instance, that leads to termination or if you lie on your application, there are cases that lead to immediate termination. Usually we uh, terminate team members due to poor performance. And we don't want to use the words poor performance because poor is a vague term. So from now on, instead of saying poor performance, we're going to say not meeting expectation. So when a team member does not meet the expectation of the job they were hired to do, that is going to lead to their termination of no longer being part of this team. Not meeting expectation as a pizza maker is that when a team member is, for instance, uh, is not able to hold the pizza line in a way that we can meet our standard of 10, 20, 30 rule, which as you know, we have that within 10 minutes, a guest need to be served for dine-in within 20 minutes max for pickup and 30 minutes out the door. So when that standard and we have a culture and a standard to maintain, if that team member is not able to help us fulfill those standards, that is that they're not meeting expectation as a team member of a pizza maker uh, as a pizza maker if a team member is not friendly or cheerful enough and what that means that we expect our servers to you know provide and again we have that company culture around here we want our guests to receive texas hospitality cheerfully being served in the dining room and if a server cannot meet that expectation again that could lead to their termination Last but not least, hypothetically, you have a driver uh, at the store that is not meeting expectation of staying productive because that is a culture we have to maintain in this company of the team staying productive throughout the shift and helping one another. Because when you're doing a task, you know, when you're staying productive, you're ultimately helping the team. And that is a company culture we want to maintain around here. And so that is what's expected. Not meeting expectations will lead to somebody not being culturally a good fit. Before termination, I wanted you to know that um, we want to make sure we have a paper trail in place. A paper trail simply is a written documentation of the fact that you gave feedback to a team member. You may have in the hallway given them feedback, hey, I'd like you to be more friendly or read back the order to make sure you don't make any mistakes in order taking hypothetically. Or if someone's a driver, you're like, hey, I'd like you to help the team with doing dishes and things like that. You know, and you may have to tell that timber multiple times and you see a trend that you have to tell them all the time. It seems like the expectation is not clear. That will lead to a coaching slip document where it's a simply a written document. Again, you're simply documenting that you sat down with the team member, you make the expectations clear to them and you gave them feedback. If you just do it verbally, there is no proof that it ever happened. So even if you come, I did tell them 10 times that this is the expectation. I made it clear. But if you do not have it in a written format, it may never happen because it was sound waves into the universe and you were maybe misunderstood. I don't know. But also doing it at a paper paper format will communicate to the team member that this is serious and we really would like you to correct this behavior. Now, everything will have to connect to our core values as a company our core value of 3x win, where we want the team member to win, we want our team as a whole to win, of course, and we want our company to win. So here in the case for the team member is that we want to have a culture of honor around here. We want to treat others as we want to be treated, Jesus says. So you yourself would not want a manager to come in, another manager to come in and terminate you and say, hey, it's not working out. We're going to let you go. And you're like, whoa, 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 where's this coming from, right? You would not want something like that for it to come out of the blue. So we do not want to treat others the same way either, right? So you want to make sure you have those written coaching slips 
sessions with them. And this is part of our leadership development. We train people for success in life through, you know, making sure that we raise our standards through excellence and diligence. This is what we do in this company. So providing those written coaching sessions or even verbal, and especially I want to specifically talk about the written ones because that's what's going to lead to termination in this case is very, very important. Another reason we do these coaching slips and or we do termination is because we want to honor our team. If we do not maintain our company culture, our company standards, and just tolerate pizza makers that are not keeping up with the time, servers that are not providing that Texas hospitality that our guests deserve, or we have drivers that are not productive throughout the shift, or people who don't want to do dishes, We and we tolerate that without correcting that behavior as a leader in this company. We are dishonoring the team and slowly putting everybody out of a job because if labor is high and we're not producing and or we're not providing the best service to our guests again gradually sales is going to go down and we're again putting everybody on the team out of a job including ourselves we want to be the kind of leaders that have a long-term vision that we honor the whole team instead of just being friendly to a team member and not want to hurt their feelings a team member forgetting why we are here we are here to serve a team correct? That's what we're here to do. We do hard things in this company. We do have hard conversations and we're okay with that because we have a long-term vision as to where we're going and we're not going to tolerate low standards and not meeting our expectations, maintaining our company culture. And of course, we need a paper trail for our company. And the reason for that is if somebody applies for unemployment, and goes and claims that there was a wrongful termination we as a company are liable we could go under it somebody could fine us or what have you overall who knows what it could lead to so you as a member of our leadership team are expected to issue coaching slips and write-ups as needed to correct behavior especially if that is going to end up leading into termination you're going to be asked hey you had to terminate john uh, let's look into his folder. There is not one coaching slip. All I heard about this team member that y'all were complaining about this and that nobody gave this team member a coaching slip and did not honor this team member sitting down with them, taking five minutes and sitting down with them and do a writing coaching session, right? You're going to be asked that in the future. And because that's what a, one of your expectations as a leader in this team. It is non-negotiable, just like a police officer, just like a nurse. If they do not fill out documentation after every encounter, a visit or a patient or whatever, if there is not proper paper trail and documentation, they will be terminated no matter how good of a doctor they are or how they handle the situation. There must be documentation that's part of the job and you are equally expected to, again, Make sure we honor that and we have the paper trail for every single team member in this company. Termination should not be a surprise. Now, one out of every hundred or something, you're going to have a team member that you had coaching sessions with them. You made our expectations clear and it's still, it came out as a surprise that we had to terminate them. You may have those people, but usually if you have multiple coaching sessions in the like two to three week spam with a team member and it seems like they don't get it and they're not correcting their behavior and you sit with them and terminate them, it's not going to be like a shock. They're going to realize, well, you know what? You guys have really high expectation. Yep. We do have high expectation. At least it won't come as a surprise. Now let's talk about the art of terminating a team member. We need to be very brief. The time to give explanations and details and scenarios and examples is during our coaching sessions that we have with team members, not during the termination. The termination must be kept less than three minutes. You need to follow the script, be brief and vague. It is that way. It's just part of the way it is. This is how we do it in this company. Uh, when you have your own company, you're welcome to do your own thing. While here, I'd like you to respect how we do things and honor that. And let's continue doing it this way. We want to res respect the team members' privacy. You don't want to do it in the middle of the kitchen where they're all their team members. Um, you know, just figure out where you're doing it. You can sit in the dining room, do it privately, but also never do it alone. You want to take another member of our leadership team to sit with you when you do this um, as a witness, because just in case the other person may say, no, you know, you told me this and that, and they come to like, what have you, and it gets out of hand. You want to make sure you have a witness so that person can hear exactly what happened um, as a neutral 
ground person. I don't know if it makes sense. Make sure you have eye contact. I know it's having a hard conversation. We don't want to give eye contact. When we look down, we are nervous. We don't want to do this, but it is critical for you to have eye contact. Honor that team member, have direct eye contact with them and enunciate, especially the key words. If you're just saying, well, we got to let you go and they don't understand, oh, wait a minute, I am being let go. When you're trying to tell a team member that this is your last day or you're not meeting expectation, you need to make sure that you are enunciating, that they hear what you are saying, that you are using to convey a message. Don't just mumble jumble through them and make sure it's clear what you're saying, or they're gonna show up the next day. And yes, this had happened before. Be firm and be friendly. Again, don't, you know, be brief. Don't be, um, yeah, well, I'm, be firm and you still want to be friendly, right? You don't want to be like mad. You don't need to raise your voice. You don't need to be what have you. Be friendly and be firm and end it positively. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. This is not going to look good for them. You know, overall, it's a termination. No one wants to get terminated, of course. And it's not going to be a highlight of their week. So make sure you end it positively with the script that I'm going to share with you in just a minute. So here are the three steps in terminating a team member under three minutes. Step number one is to thank them. Step number two is to deliver the news. Step number three is to wish them well and thank them again. Very simple. So you're going to first thank them. You're going to say, thank you so much, John. In this case, John is getting uh, fired. John, I want to thank you for being part of this team for the last two months and you worked hard serving us. Next, I'm going to deliver the bad news. However, I'm sorry to tell you that you have not been meeting expectations of the job you were hired to do. And it is no longer culturally a good fit. And at this time, I have to let you go. You want to wish them the best. So you're like, listen, I want to wish you the best. And again, I wanted to thank you for your service. You're going to show that body language. If you're sitting at, in a dining room, what have you, you want to stand up and you're going to shake their hands hypothetically, but your body language is that the session is over. And if they have to sign something, that's the time you say, hey, I'd like you to sign it here and date kind of documenting that this happened. They may disagree with you. They're going to ask you questions. Why is this happening? You know, blah, blah, blah. They may raise their voice, throw a fit, threaten the company, threaten you and what have you. Stay calm. It, you know, people react different ways. And again, we're going to reflect as to why that happened. If we delivered the message in a way that provoked that kind of a reaction, we're going to look into that later, but stay calm, keep it brief. No matter how much they ask you for explanation for things, you do not have the obligation to do that. So even if they ask you why, why is this happening? Whatever you have not been meeting expectation. That is all you need to provide. And this no longer is culturally a good fit. So you know, even if we have a team member who was on their cell phone all the time and you verbally told them to put their phone away, you know, 10 times and what have you. And then that leads to their termination. Even if they're like, they're told, is it because I was on my cell phone and whatever and blah, 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 but I've been doing better and blah, blah, what have you. I appreciate it. Again, you want to thank them again. I want to thank you for your service. This no longer is culturally good fit. I do wish you the best. And again, I'd like you to sign here and blah, 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 something like that. Wrap it up, be quick, get it done. There is a termination checklist that you do need to fill out as a manager, as a leader in this company. You need to fill out a termination uh, checklist that is on our training site under management forms. Every team member that gets terminated, we need to follow that. It includes our, you know, it goes over everything that needs to happen after a team member is terminated. There are like 10 things. You're not, oh, I remember everything. You're going to forget stuff. So follow the checklist, stick to the plan. Another thing that I always like to do is to reflect to see how we can get better. The only way you get better as a leader is if you reflect on what happened, how it happened, how could you have served this team member better? You know, did we honor them? Did we provide enough training? Did we sit with them, provide coaching sessions? Did they understand the expectations here? Leadership is a skill and it needs to be practiced. It's just like making pizza. You have to make a lot of pizzas to get fast, for instance, right? And have the proper technique. There needs to be a reflection that has to happen. I wanted to thank you for being courageous to be a leader in this company. Be courageous to have hard conversations because I know it is very hard and no one loves doing this, but you've had the courage to step up your game and be a leader and do things like this. And for that, we appreciate it and we're, we thank you for it. If you've got any other questions, bring it up and we're happy to talk about it. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next week right here on Making Dough Show. Thank you. Bye-bye.